So let's start by creating our first cone. Once we've selected the cone from the palette, we can click on the ground and we'll magically get a cone. And this is where your camera controls are going to come in handy. I'll hold Alt and I'll click and I'll zoom in and look at my cone. Now obviously that cone doesn't look quite like what we want the base of our lamp to look like. So the second thing that we're going to have to learn is how to position and change the shape of a print. Now before we get building in earnest, we want to practice a few basics about interacting with prims. You'll notice that the prim right now is glowing yellow. And the reason for that is that's the prim that I've selected. Whenever I'm in my editing screen, you'll notice right now the center icon is highlighted. Whenever I'm in my editing screen, whatever primitive I have selected or whatever object I have selected will glow yellow. So if I click somewhere else, like I click on the floor, then I'll select that floor primitive. And I'll go ahead and click back on my cone. Now, you'll notice that my cone has three colored arrows going through it. Red, green, and blue. And you'll also notice that I have a list of numbers up here. These numbers correspond to the location of the center of my cone. Okay, so in the world, it's at x coordinate 215, y coordinate 88, z coordinate 512. And what this gives me is a way to actually move my prim very, very precisely in space. So if I want to move it in the x direction, that's sort of forward and backward relative to where my avatar is, I'm going to click on the red arrow. You'll notice that along the red axis there are some arrows. When I move my cursor over the arrows, they uh, glow brighter and get bigger. Now I'm going to click on it and, and hold it and then I can drag and it will drag my cone right along that axis. Okay, So you can see I can just click and drag back and forth. Or if I want to move it side to side I'll click on the green one and drag it back and forth. You'll also notice that while I'm doing that this nice little guide appears. Okay, The guide basically allows me to move the cone to a very precise position. I'm going to snap, in this case, to exact locations along the y-axis. So if I click and drag, I can move it anywhere. If I want to snap to a precise location, I'll move my cursor up until it's in this ruler and then it'll just move by, in this case, half meter increments. Okay, so I'll put it at y coordinate 88, and I'm going to do the same thing with my x, put it at x coordinate 214. So now I have a very precise idea of where my object is. Now, for most people, you won't need this very much, but I tend to build like an engineer, so I like to know exactly where things are. So that's the first thing, moving a prim by clicking on the arrows. The second thing that you might need to do with a primitive is rotate it. If you want to get the rotation handles, hold the control key. Now you'll notice that what just changed. When I press the control key, I now get three circles centered on my primitive. If I click on that circle and drag, it pulls my primitive around just the way that you would expect. Okay. And just like with moving an object, there's also a grid for the angle. So if I want my cone to point to my left, I can pull my cursor over here into the ruler and it'll snap to a precise degrees. In this case, I want it to point directly up. So when it's selected, you can move it. When it's selected and you hold control, you can rotate it. If you select it and press control and shift at the same time, now you can resize the object. Now let's zoom in a bit so that we can see it clearly. If I hold control and then shift, I get options for resizing. 
Now what you'll notice is that I have a cube. And I can interact with these little cubes on the sides in order to modify my object's size. So for example, for the base of my lamp, I really want something that's much flatter. So if I want to flatten my object, I can use the top handle, this blue one, and just drag it down. And you'll notice that my cylinder or that my cone gets shorter. Okay? So the blue handles are always up and down. The green handles are always the y direction. That's left and right. And the x direction is always forward and backward. Okay? If I want to scale my whole ob object up, I can click on one of the corner handles and then it will get bigger or smaller. Okay, that looks like a pretty good base. And now I'm going to go ahead and move it down again. There we go. So there's your first prim. And again, in order to look at it from different angles and rotate around it, I'm just holding the Alt button in order to get my magnifying glass and then I click on the thing I want to look at and move my mouse. Now, you'll notice that I can't really control what angle I'm looking at it from. If I want to change the angle, I hold Control and Alt at the same time. When I'm holding Control and Alt, instead of zooming in and out, moving the mouse up and down changes my viewing angle. So Alt zooms in and out, Control and Alt, changes my viewing angle. So sometimes you might want a top view, sometimes you might want a side view. So we have our first prim and we've got it positioned where we want it. The next thing that we're going to need to do is change it so that it looks more like metal. You can see that by default every primitive that you create starts with this sort of plywood texture. And again I'm controlling my camera by holding the Alt button and then clicking with the mouse to look. In order to change the texture and the color of an object, we're going to look at our editing control panel over here. You can see there's five different tabs. One of them says texture. Let's look at that one. Now there are many different properties that you can set that affect the appearance of your prim. We're going to start with some basics. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this nasty plywood texture. So click on the texture box, and it'll open the texture picker. Well, we want just a blank texture for now. So let's go ahead and click, uh, click blank, and you'll see it sets it to just a blank white. And you can see that our prim has been updated to be blank white. Now my lamp, I'm going to make my lamp sort of a steely gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the color by clicking on the color box, opens the color picker, and I'm going to pick a light gray. Okay, This is just like a color picker in any other uh, graphics application. And I'll select that. So now it's a nice gray. And I also want to make it just a little bit shiny so it looks like metal. So under the shininess drop box, I'll pick low. And there we go. There's the base of my lamp. 